Ayotomi Rotimi is the creative director of Exclamations by Tomi Rotimi, a premium ready to ready to ready to make brand based in Lagos, Nigeria. Host of the popular podcast Tips from My Fashion Business, where she decides insights from her 18 years career as a fashionpreneur, as she likes to call herself. So, Tomi, I'd like you very quickly to just touch on the impact that the lockdown and the COVID-19 pandemic has caused. Don't go to your opportunities yet because I want us to take that all at the end. So what has happened? What, what, is, the, what is the reality for you now as a fashionpreneur? Um, thank you. Um, I'm going to really just echo what everybody has said already. Mm. We have a physical store as well. And um, most of our business is from our physical store, even though we have an online store. Um, so the stores are locked down. So, you know, no business is coming through the stores. Um, another major impact is my staff, you know. So I find myself becoming more than just their CEO. At this time, I'm trying to manage people's emotions, expectations, you know, what's the future of their, of their, of their jobs, of their careers within our organization. So that's, that's something that um, I'm needing to manage quite a bit because of the pandemic. Um, then we also work with a calendar, you know, we're very big on organizing our, our year. So the calendar has been completely disrupted. We were supposed to have uh, um, our first pop-up in the UK for the year in May, this month actually, on the, 20, on the 16th of May. We had already started um, creating buzz about that. We had partners already. We had started manufacturing already. Um, so we can't have that because of the pandemic. So obviously another thing that Mobo said is even our clothing line, our collection, because we also work with collections, you know, we have to go and rethink what the collection was supposed to be. You know, everything has changed from, you know, there's no demand for occasion wear, for instance. So, you know, <laughs> that's not going to happen. Yeah. You know, there's no, you know there's, there's, there's no demand for work wear as it used to be. So we have to totally, you know, consider what that would look like. There's no demand for church wear, which was stellar for us. You know, so church is not happening anytime soon. So what's happening to that collection? So there's just a total disruption of every facet of, of the business at, the, at this point. And of course, like everybody said, the, the impact on the bottom line, of course, no revenues coming in as, um, as they would have without the, the disruption. Yeah, I, I, I'm glad you touched on the emotional and mental health aspect because, yes, a lot of us business owners are going to turn into counselors because yeah. this all times. I mean, we are worried about our businesses yeah. so much more. Our staff are worried about their own, yeah. uh, their, their jobs. And because we really can't promise anything because everything is yeah. so uncertain. As much as everybody would like to keep all their staff, you have their dedicated staff who've been with you for so long, but nobody really knows how long. And it's interesting yeah. you say, I mean, of course, there is absolutely no demand for occasion wear for church wear because nobody yeah. is going to places. Yeah. One of the dressmakers sent me a design. She said, oh, that fabric I have with you, should I make this? And I know she's obviously just trying to get a people yeah. busy. Yeah. And I said, no way. I'm not, first of all, nobody's even in the mood for that. And you don't yeah. know you're likely to be able to wear any of those. So yeah. All, all ramifications. Thank you very much for that, uh, uh, Ayotomi. I'm going to go straight on to Kola Wale Yusuf, Creative Di Director of Kola Kudus Couture and President elect of F FADAN, which is the Fashion Designers Association of Nigeria. Kola's core area is design and production of menswear brand. And this is spread. Um, Bumi, are you back? Okay, we'll go on to Kola and we'll do Bumi last. This is spread across retailing, marketing, working with internal and external customers and suppliers. As the Fadden president, Kola is tasked with the uh, responsibilities from creating community for members of his uh, industry and also harnessing opportunities for them. So Kola, you remember when we were talking late earlier, I called you Bano Buleyo Biri, which means that you're the guy. So let's share it from a men's perspective. Your brand is menswear and you also have the 12 cap of being the president-elect of Faden. So how has this impacted your business in particular, and in general, uh, the, the fashion industry across the whole value chain? Um, thank, you you very thank you very much for this. Um, I'm really honored to be here, and um, I'm really happy you're giving a voice to the fashion industry. Um, I think uh, I don't have as much experience as other people have. I think I have about 13 to 14 years experience. 
um, with my little experience uh, with this pandemic that we're experiencing right now, like everyone has said, business is on a shutdown, proper lockdown, um, no production is going on, um, no sales is going on. We have a physical store, so we also retail online, um, but even online, there's nothing happening. You just have people making inquiries at the moment. And um, and also we saw also one of the things we do is we also have retail partners who we'll partner different stores to retail from their places. Right now all these stores are shut down. There's nothing happening. Even when people will retail with outside of the country, everything is on a lockdown. So we just have inventories everywhere. We have overheads. Um, for our staff, we need to keep paying some of them, and for some of them that are on wages, we need to keep giving them allowances to live if we still want them to come back after the COVID. So everywhere is on a lockdown right now, nothing is happening. So, but yeah. typically, yeah, everything is on lockdown. Yeah, so the, the issue of inventory is really scary because you see all these things piling up, nobody is buying them, no avenue to let go of them. So that really is a challenge. And then, as you said, of course, some key workers, you may have to continue paying their wages. Um, yeah, it, it's a tough time. I'm gonna go straight on to Bumi the chief coordinator, as she terms herself, of Emisara. And I'll very quickly read out her profile so you understand where she's coming from. Olubemi George is the chief coordinator for Emisara, an indigenous Nigerian accessory line that not only produces and assembles statement accessories, but also runs a concession store that retails a wide range of accessories for other accessory brands. She's also a partner in M&S Garments, a textile company that's specializing in apparel production. Their ready-to-wear line is called MASH and it delivers affordable comfort clothing. She is a designer and fashion entrepreneur with over 22 years experience across several industries. Olubemi George is the chief coordinator for Emisara, an indigenous Nigerian accessory line that not only produces and assembles statement accessories, but also runs a concession store that retails a wide range of accessories for other accessory brands. She's also a partner in M&S Garments, a textile company that's specializing in apparel production. Their ready-to-wear line is called MASH and it delivers affordable comfort clothing. She is a designer and fashion entrepreneur with over 22 years experience across several industries. So Bumi, you're into accessories, which is not um, uh, clothes as the other three. So tell me, how has it impacted your business, this lockdown and the pandemic? Um, good evening, everybody. And um, just to answer uh, the question that uh, Mrs. Zaki has asked, I mean, you can imagine how it will be for accessories if um, clothing is, is, is going through such a tough time. The, the truth is that the discretionary nature um, of fashion makes it extremely vulnerable in this season. And for us, um, you know, who's, who's going to be wearing neck pieces and earrings and statement pieces at this time? That is just not priority at all. And um, interestingly, we just opened our store at the Palms barely two months before this started. So the impact is really serious for us because we made all this investment based on projections of sales as we've seen it over the years. But every projection you could have made, you know, in the past is brought to zero now because nobody saw this coming at all. So for us, definitely sales has been completely um, impacted, I would say, down to almost 10%. Uh, you may still have the one or two people who want to purchase something very sparingly, it's not very often. And, you know, another major impact that we've had is our new store. I mean, um, the bills haven't stopped. Um, the money isn't coming in. The staff we just hired, we hired a good number of new people to manage the expansion. So we literally just expanded and all of a sudden COVID has happened. So like Moba said, we're just really praying because we have no formula. We have no, no, you know, no history to look back and say, oh, you know, what did that company do? Or what did that company do? There's nothing. So yeah. we're just really just, and our staff, of course, you know, just hired new people. And as sad as it sounds, you know, last in, first out, really. Yeah. So yeah. it's tough. It's really, really tough yeah. for people. Yeah. I have staff yeah. that I've had for seven, eight years. Those are the ones that you want to keep the first because they've been with you forever. But, you know, you, you probably can't pay all the full salaries they used to but they also have people depending on them. Yeah. 
So it, it, it's a tough one. It's, it's a, a tough one. It, it is. I mean, that, that, I think that that is just a, a, you know really a devastating to have invested so much, started twenty twenty new hopes and aspirations, such major investment, mm -hmm. putting together this amazing industries yeah. hub, and as you say. Yeah. <laughs> Arms is going to continue paying it. They're not going to. But you know what? As we talk about opportunities, we, people are going to have to go to their landlords and have discussions because um, this affects everybody. And uh, one of the things one of the lawyers that I spoke to said is that everybody's got to go back to the negotiation table because you know that, you know, yeah. times are different and things are very difficult. I mean, even for us in uh, my company, we hired two new people Absolutely. because we thought of having more business. We want to get more into the millennials. We want to do more of the social media. And then uh, we have this business has stopped, whether it's the venues or the events, zero, absolutely zero. So it is a really, really frightening time. But guess what? We're entrepreneurs. We don't give up. We dig our heels in. And this is what this conversation is all about. How yes. do we, what, 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 what's the future? What are we going to do? I mean, enough of the doom and gloom. We just wanted to share the impact on our businesses so that we can set the tone for this uh, conversation. I'm sure all the people listening in, the reason they're listening in is because they're going through the same thing. So what are we going to do? How are we going to get out of this? You know, out of every crisis, there comes opportunity. Abimbala has alluded to it. Are we going to have to change our business models? Mm -hmm. Are we going to have to diversify within our industry? Are we going to have to diversify outside our industry? Because there are many people who are making money at this time. People in logistics, people in uh, IT, I mean, people in food, you know. So there, 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 there are areas of time of crisis. So I'm now going to, having all shared our, you know, our um, war stories, this is the time of hope and encouragement. So I'm going to start with Mobo. So Mobo, what are the opportunities that you see? even in spite of this uh, terrible disruption? What opportunities do you see for your business or the fashion industry in general? Okay, hello again. Um, Mrs. Abimbola Kikube, coming right to you for <laughs> no smart, face mask. <laughs> <laughs> so that is an opportunity there that I'm going to latch on to because we have to look inwards. That is one thing I've been you know, thinking about like, you know, when this initially happened, I, so I was sad, but I had to say to myself, why beat up yourself over things you cannot control? I have no control over that. So I'm not going to focus my energy on what I can't control. So I move on. So I started thinking, what do I do? So for me, number one thing is I have to check my ecosystem. What can I do here in my space? So I'm thinking of looking for places to manufacture here. So it's a good thing that this is happening. It's a crisis, but like Mrs. Z said, in every crisis, there are opportunities. So one opportunity for me is to now latch on to Mrs. Akiku Bay. We've been on this for so long so that she, I will engage her to produce some of my um, fashion pieces. Okay. Digitalization as well. We, we all say, I say I'm an omni-channel fashion retail business. Yes, I have presence online. But the truth is, there is a difference between being online and killing it and just being online just to have a presence. So we cannot overemphasize at this point the importance of digitalizing our business and not only being online for, sale, for selling, I mean, not only for sales, but in terms of warehousing, everything, in terms of your point of sales, this made me realize a lot of things that is as if some, of my, some areas of my business are working in silos. I should be able to connect everything. I need everything to be in the cloud so I can have access to it. That's one thing I've realized that um, I have to do. So e-commerce, but not being there for the sake of being there. Remember I said, we have to be efficient even there. It's not automatic. The same way I run my brick and mortar, I must be able to run my online store the same way to be able to make, um, you know, uh, make sales so that it contributes as well to our revenue. I said most of our revenues come for, um, from our brick and mortar. It needs to shift now. We need to ensure that we have more coming in. My target this year was to have like 30% of my revenue from online. 
But right now, with this pandemic, I'm like, why not move it to 100? You have more people to reach. So we have to work harder at, um, at um, reaching more people and doing whatever we have to do, also across all platforms, not just your website. But most importantly, we should ensure, I want to ensure that my website is working. I need to onboard my customers onto my website so I know that I am the one keeping in my data we all know now that data is the new what currency so we have to ensure i have to ensure that i keep all my data and also i talked about you know reducing importation or if possible slash importation and see what you can produce here and also look into other african countries funny enough when i went to um, china in, um, europe international business school i met a lady and they actually have started a factory in ethiopia and i was thinking Oh, Ethiopia, I would come and visit just to see how fantastic would it be that my, I'm actually, even if I outsource, I'm outsourcing to a neighboring, a neighboring African country, not all the way to China. So they are coming to Africa, but we are not seeing it. But it's like this pandem pandemic has sort of like opened my eyes to see the possibility of what we can achieve here. So yes. looking inwards is very key. Digitalization of our business is so key. And then also we have to fill the pulse of our, of our customers, of our consumers. We cannot use old data. We cannot use old information. All those now, they are obsolete. Now we need to fill their pulse. What do they want? What can they afford to pay? And we create a product. So essentially, what I'm saying is we have to go and re-engineer our product offering. Because yeah. what used to work is no longer going to going work. To work. So we have to get creative. So it's all about yeah. creativity. So in terms of moving stock, I hate that word sales. It just sort of devalues your product. I don't like it. So we have to find creative ways to move the inventory that is sitting in our store. Because I can't eat them, but I have to <laughs> sell them. <laughs> Most people are not going to be working. When they, okay, so income has reduced. They've slashed I listened to Access Bank today and it was saying that 75% of their staff will be laid off. Those are my customers. Those are the ones with the disposable income. So what happens, which means my customers, the, the customer, my customer list really has reduced. So I need to enter the new market. How can I enter the new market? How can I ensure that I provide, you know, the sort of products they're willing to buy? Yeah. And also, we, I, need, I, I don't know, me, I need to break out of my mindset. Yeah. So it's not, That's it. we have a problem of this is how I do it. Mm -hmm. It's no longer this is how I do it. It is, a, it is a case of what do I have to do now? Right. Thanks. What do I have to do? Thanks very much, Mubo. And I, 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 love, I love all the, the passion. And anyway, you know that's your byline. Passion, your passion is fashion, isn't it, Mubaz? Thank you. Those were, that's, those were amazing insights. The first thing, the first thing you're going to do, you're thinking locally now, because I know that Mubaz, you do actually outsource many of your designs yes. from China, from Turkey. But right now, uh, uh, Bimbole Lakovertu, a Nigerian manufacturer, is who you'll She's be looking at. She's now my partner. She's now your partner. Or else you'll be looking at uh, other African countries. So you see some good will come out of this uh, uh, terrible uh, situation we're in. You've spoken passionately about digitalization, that we shouldn't do it just for doing its sake. A lot of people just have websites so that they can say I have a website so they can say I'm online, but we're not really keen into that. But right now, as you say, all of us have to have a total mindset. I like the word Bumi used earlier. We have to pivot. Yeah. We have to change our thinking completely because everything has changed. And everything has changed for quite a while because even by the time they find a vaccine, which they say maybe 12 to 18 months, by the time things really go back to normal, we're probably we all be so used to this way yeah. so and what, guess what digitalization means investments it means that we have to think of investing in that space so that we don't have the issues i mean people have to be able to pay you easily they have to be able to find you easily so all of us are going to have to be unlearning a lot of things uh you mentioned something else very interesting e-commerce e-commerce is going to be the i mean those are the people who are going to be in business a lot people who are bringing e-commerce platforms and then creative ways to move your stock without calling it sales i'm looking forward to seeing that yes. so thank you very much Mubo. one I more like, thing I like before i round up we have to be adaptable that's what i mean by not this is the way i do it we have to yes, be exactly. adaptable very important exactly. in this season. yes 
it really is now a, ma a matter of adapt or die. If you do not adapt, you're really just going to curl up and die. So everybody has to shake their head and know that it's a whole new world. It's a whole new way of doing business. It's a whole new customer you've got out there. You've said it. People who really have the income that would buy, they're all being laid off. Who are your customers? What are they going to need? What do you want to give to them? So there's a lot to think about. So Abimbala, are you ready for me? Yeah? Okay. So uh, can you come on and tell us what are the opportunities? You already snuck in about the masks. So go on. <laughs> Tell us about the masks and tell us some more. Yeah, well, um, as Mobile said, the dig digital market space, I won't um, flog that, overflog that. Uh, the urgency can't be overemphasized. We should be there from like yesterday. You design to communicate your brand, your products, and your ideology. And the experience must um, catch your market, the, your target market. Um, because of the... Um, value of the Naira, we must become export oriented. We believe that we have the capacity to service the um, international markets and they want to come in. Actually, they are raring to come into Nigeria. So we need to be ready to be able to uh, fight for our space in the market. The, on, the issues with um, export is that um, in terms of online business, Nigeria is not trustworthy internationally because of, I mean, what the um, Yahoo boys and, you know, the fraud boys have done. Yeah, I mean, there's so many websites that you can't even access from Nigeria anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know? So, but I, th I believe that um, those are hurdles that can still be overcome, you know, with um, collaboration. The bigger, the better. If, we, if, the, if the industries can come together and it's not just a one-man thing, you know, if it's a big a force with um, um, collab, um, affiliations with international organizations, international bodies and accreditation, then people will feel safe to um, buy from these sites. Right now, people, I mean, nobody in America except is Nigerian, they actually know you as uh, maybe you and these archivists or mobiles that they will feel safe to use their cards on your individual um, sites. So that credibility needs to be built up. And I believe that it's collaboration that will bring that to pass. To pass. The bigger, the better. And if we're going to be export oriented, we're going to have to adopt. Um, uh, global best practices, you know, uh, be organized in the way we do business because um, those are the things they're going to look out for when they want to work with you. We need to build capacity. Um, I'm so thankful for um, La Cobato. It was something that, um, you know, we just started, but it's like being ready for the opportunity. At first, it was difficult to break into the market because people, designers are used to sourcing from abroad and things like that. But we started winning a few people over. In this right now, it's like where we finally um, just said, okay, let's market it for, uh, to private individuals. And uh, the minimum order was 250. We put that on today and we've got at least four orders. Well, of course, way above that um, 250 pieces. So the reason why we're able to step into that is because the capacity is on ground. We need to build capacity to manufacture. For instance, if um, there's a site now and um, uh, an international is really big mm -hmm. and collaboration is the key. I want to talk about collaboration again because um, the reason why Lakovato like, come to pass because they all come together. This all came together, run our state uh, businesses, but we have an industry. One person is a seasoned retailer, the, another person is a, an admin um, an admin person, and then I am the creative uh, person. The business, the factory is in Ibadan. It's running, you know, because different people have bought different strengths to together to make it work so collaboration is a way to go bigger i believe that the, the bigger something is the better we need to be inclusive the market has changed whether we like it or not the middle class has shrunk 
I didn't even know that um, Access Bank was laying off some percentage of um, staff. But even if our Access Bank isn't laying, look at that. Every single one of us has spoken about how thinking about having to uh, let off uh, people. If you're not making money, you can't pay salaries. You know, so it means that the middle class is shrinking. The earning and buying capacity of people has, has completely reduced. The market has changed. It means that you know, we need to look closely at what people really want. We need to look at the products that we are going to offer so that people can buy, you know, at least within um, Nigeria. And then whatever we do as businesses, we've realized now that we can't prosper in a vacuum. We, people are yeah. having to feed the people around them now. So whatever business we do, we need to be empowering as we go, bring more people along yeah. as possible create yeah. the platform for other people to 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 be empowered you know as we go along to and of course flexibility you must be able to rethink your position on the go real time every day as you're talking to somebody and you learn something else you know we must be able to rethink your position as you go and to uh, be able to do that you must research in your line of business as much as possible. The internet is rife with every information that you want. You must be ready to retrain. Yeah. You know, Thank every you. day, learn something new. And then, of course, regroup, build new alliances, build new uh, collaborations, new businesses as we go. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. So, Thank you. Thank you very much. You, 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 uh, actually, I, you say what? I actually wanted talk about one of my uh, my biggest challenge actually at this mm -hmm. time is that i have a facility mm -hmm. alone and the bank hasn't stopped the interest mm -hmm. we're still going to have to pay interest and even though they said they've reduced the interest but they we're still going to have to pay interest and we are not um producing that is a really big uh, challenge mm -hmm. but we're just looking to how no. As I said, conversations have to be training. Yeah, clearly, yeah. conversations have to be had, and banks are going to have to be flexible. They will know that this is a year they are not going to make their super huge yes. profits as well. So, thank you so much for that intervention, Abimbola. Let me, digital market, we don't have to dwell on because Moba has talked about that extensively. I find what you've spoke, said about exports very interesting. And, Kala, I'm going to be calling on you next because I think you, in your position as president elect of FEDA, and maybe you can shed some light on it. Because, as you've said, the problem we have with exports is our credibility as Nigerians abroad because of the way we're perceived. As you say, many sites, you'll find that when they say the drop down, you look at all the countries, Nigeria will not be there. So, you can't click that Nigeria because we don't even want you there so how do we deal with that and um, you spoke about global best practices i think that's another very important thing a lot of businesses this is the time to get your you know all of us because we're so busy being entrepreneurs we never put our houses in order i mean so this is the time to build your processes all your business processes everything that you're supposed to do that you haven't done why don't you take this time out as people uh, said the internet is a minefield of information or you can always find somebody that can take you through so build processes so that you're actually running companies that can stand the test of time because i tell you this for nothing it's the businesses that have processes that have structure that are going to, going to be able to withstand the tsunami that has hit all of us. If you don't have the processes and structure, you're really going to struggle. So I think if you don't have it, this is a great time to build it. And while I say that, I'd like to mention that because we know that this is a challenge for many entrepreneurs, we're actually having another webinar on Sunday where we're going to have industry experts come and talk to us about the emerging role of HSE, HSE which is health and safety, insurance, law, and tax. We're talking basically about the events industry, but I know that if you're listening, you'll get a lot because insurance we're not doing, taxation we're not doing. I mean, there's so many areas and so many ways that we can help our businesses run. So I'd really like to encourage you to listen into that webinar. If you go to the Eventual Nigeria website, you'll find the details. Another thing Bimbo said, which is important, training. This has been a fantastic time to train. In fact, I've been so busy the last two weeks so from webinar to webinar, I have gotten so much information. So if you do nothing else with this downtime, train yourself, retrain yourself, because we have to retool and we have to reskill for the new challenges that we're going to face. And flexibility, uh, Mobile had already mentioned this. Every day, it's so uncertain. Every day, you're just changing. You just have to keep making it up as you go along. Because as you wake up one day, it's this way. In three days' time, it's another way. So let me go to uh, Kola, because I'd really like you to talk about maybe how Faden can help. Sorry, how is it pronounced? Is it Faden or Faden? So I call it correctly. 
unmute yourself, Kala. You need to unmute yourself. So, yes. Fadan, Fadan. Fadan, excellent. So please yes. just tell us about maybe what intervention, because at least that is an umbrella group for fashion designers. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about what they're doing. And then, of course, what you're doing in your own personal business, your menswear brand. So uh, basically, what, one of the things we've been trying to encourage our members to do is um, collaboration. Uh, because right now, it's more like if you don't collaborate, collapse yeah. at this rate. So it's more about collaborations. It's more about co-sharing in terms of co-sharing spaces, co-sharing um, production and retail spaces. Um, and also, we're looking at a situation whereby we can talk to the government because now more than ever we support. So now we're looking at, we are manufacturers, we're designers. So we're looking at a situation whereby we can talk to the government to say, for example, why don't you help us reduce import tariff on raw materials? Because we still do a lot of importations. And um, increase import tariff on finished products. So let me give you an example. Just Can you just imagine if what happened to the rice industry was what happened in the um, fashion industry? Mm. I mean, even the tailors, even when the tailors on the roadside will be cleaning out like crazy right now. Mm -hmm. That's everybody will be doing a lot of. So we need policies that will protect and promote the industry. So we need policies that will say the government now allows everybody to start wearing made in Nigerian clothes. <laughs> Do you understand? It yeah, you can still wear your suits. You can but it has to be made in Nigeria. It doesn't necessarily have to be Akara or printed fabric. But the government should encourage made in Nigeria. So imagine, for example, now, if you're going to work Monday to, to Friday, and for four days, you are allowed, or for the whole five days, you can wear your traditional wear or made in Nigeria. So I'll give you an example. There are a couple of um, companies right now in Nigeria that are doing traditional wears Monday to Monday. So on the Monday, you can go to your work with you in your Ankara. And guess what? Directly or indirectly, the industry is getting better. You are empowering more people. Because usually, if you have five or ten caftans, but right now, you now wear it like every day. It now becomes your everyday wear. So you need to get more pieces. So imagine that across Nigeria, every government is promoting and saying, let's do more of African wear. Or made in Nigeria, rather. Because not everybody is going to wear Ankara. But you can wear your made in Nigeria suits and made in Nigeria that. So we're putting a lot of collaboration, co-sharing, working together, even doing um, matters amongst ourselves. So we're seeing, oh, I'm in Surulere and a big um, production facility, and I'm only using it up to 50% capacity. Why don't you bring in another designer to join you to use the other remaining 50% and it pays for that space? Because at the end of the day, one of the major things that kills in the fashion business is the OPEX. So now, instead of you having two generators, you're probably sharing one generator. I buy 5,000 or 10,000 and two of us are sharing those costs. The security, we're sharing the cost. The cleaners are sharing the cost. So at the end of the day, by the time you have all these shared costs, it brings yeah. down your overhead. They become more competitive in the market. Yeah. So we have a lot of um, partnerships. So I'll give another example. So imagine I get an order to produce 100,000 shirts, like Abimbola said. What if Primark is saying, we want to make this of, um, of clothes? Right now, we are not encouraging anybody to do, make any capital investment. This is not to say, oh, I want to invest a lot in machineries and all of that. It is not time for investing in any capital, uh, any doing any capital investment. Instead, if I get that kind of order, I outsource to Tommy, I outsource to be Abimbola, and I'll just outsource. We have a standard and everybody can meet up to that. One of the things Fadan is doing is, we're trying to regulate quality standard for our members. And we've been doing a lot of trainings. Um, so in the past two, three weeks, we've been having the Fadan Educate Series on our platform. And everybody has been educating themselves and all of that. But, and so right now, everybody is doing mask, mask, mask. That's what everybody is doing right now. But I find out that, Proud to now, a lot of us didn't have the right calculations on 
busting of the of, of the mask. Everybody was just giving ridiculous prices. So now we have found a lot of wrong calculations out. So the association is saying, okay, we are going to come up with a standard pricing that we have to share amongst all our members. So if you are going to take any mask to do, you have to do it at this price because not a lot of people are, are finance savvy or pricing savvy or accounting savvy. So they just give a price, not knowing what exact price will work. So we are going to be guiding our members to say, you cannot do a price lesser than this price. Otherwise you're going to be at loss. So like mm -hmm. I said, we're trying to leverage our numbers to see how we can come together, collaborate and achieve so much using our overheads and working together as a community. Excellent. Because no community new way of life now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kala. Yes, that's what, those were one of the things that uh, Bimbala has stretched. So it's really obvious. Collaboration, collaboration, collaboration. And it makes absolute sense. I mean, you are working with a factory at half capacity. Why don't you bring somebody else in so it's full capacity and that brings down your overheads and obviously makes you more competitive. It makes absolute sense. And I think it's because the trust factor has to come in. We need to begin to trust ourselves as entrepreneurs because you know everybody wants to keep their own thing to themselves. They don't want to share. So all those are all the kind of mind shifts and mindsets that we have to get into. So co-sharing spaces, I think that's critical. I mean, and that is going to be a definite outcome for school. COVID. It's only going to make sense. And uh, well, you spoke about Made in Nigeria. I don't think many people will thank you. We cannot wear Made in Nigeria 100% because we're still global citizens. But I absolutely agree with you. I mean, for a very long time, I wore Ankara a lot, even from when I was just as soon as I left the bank. And now I'm just um, an Adire major. I love Adire. So I actually love African fabrics and I love Made in Nigeria. I mean, all my sisters here, they make their things in Nigeria. But then, of course, you know, you still sometimes want to have that one special item. So I don't think anybody will ever legislate in a free society that we cannot wear what we want. But I am 100% for us looking inwards, supporting our local industries. And you know what? When we travel and we wear our own things, I mean, the kind of compliments we get from our leather wear to our neck pieces to our clothes, it's amazing. So I am a champion of uh, everything Nigerian. But um, I, I think legislating that it has to, has to no. absolutely be that 100%. No, no. It may not, it is, it may not work. It's for the government to encourage I it. I understand. I understand. Yeah. It does yeah. have to be encouraged. But then you know what's important? The thing you said about regulating standards. Because it's all okay for the women who are on the panel here. We know they have standards. But a lot of Nigerian uh, um, uh, uh, dressmakers and fashion people are not really up there with it in terms of their quality you know whenever we we always have a uh, and you've participated before all of you we have the uh, business pitch as part of our fashion soup and sometimes we're amazed at people who say they want to be in the fashion industry that don't know a thing about anything and yet they want to go into it so i think training your people is critical yeah. we've spoken about yeah. that a very, lot very of training so. a lot of uh, quality control because really if things see things that are high quality made in nigeria they will go out and buy them and i think there's a, a great move towards that anyway so thank you Kola uh, and as you said one bit of advice it is not the time to invest in heavy machinery this is the time to co-share so find out who is doing what you can do and make sure you're sharing with them excellent so Ayotomi I'll come to you now can you give us your insight into what you think you would like to do or what the fashion industry should be doing post-covid and then can I just say something we were talking about Primac do you know that they are struggling now yeah. when I heard that they yeah. are yeah. having issues I almost had a heart attack. They got it so can you... because they have no online presence. Apparently, so they went yes. to 650 million pounds a month in sales. Can you to imagine? Zero. I mean, how... So what is telling yeah, all of us is that we we'll just have to get with yeah. the yeah. program. You so, can't say you have to do it one way. You don't want to do another. We have to do what Absolutely. we have to do. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you so much. So I tell me, over to you. Thank you. Um, I'm a serial optimist. It's been a, <laughs> it's been a struggle, <laughs> but I remain a serial optimist. Um, yes, and one of the big things that I see, first of all, I need to say that um, this too shall pass. It is yeah. temporary at best. So, you know, we need to keep sharing and encouraging people to know that um, this will pass at some point. But at the end of this, one of the big things that I see that will happen is there's going to be a change in consumer behavior. Before now, it was a struggle to get people to buy online. It was a struggle, even with your best website and with everything in place. 
we had kind of trained our customers to experience us in physical stores. That was how we trained them. That was the best. That was how we showed up for them. And this, um, inevitably, it made it difficult for us to scale. Because if the only way you can scale is by scaling physically, it makes that very expensive. And obviously, it's not something that is sustainable for, for a brand. But now, like it or not, customers are forced to shop online. That's the only way they can shop with us. Most people say, oh, I'm, I'm not techie, or I don't know how to do this online thing, or, oh, I don't trust the online. You know, we have the whole trust issue. But now we are going to, with time, we are going to force people to engage online. That's one of the things that I have experienced in this, in this time. Um, some of my customers who have been my customers for a long time, who probably have never been to my website, you know, but needed to buy some of my pieces, you know, they eventually went ahead and said, okay, you know what, let me even just go to this website finally and see what's going on. And, you know, luckily we have put a lot in place, we've invested a lot in our website. And they found out it was quite easy, you know, to engage with us on the website and uh, to get their pieces through the website, um, even if they are going to pick up the pieces later, but it was smooth sailing for them to shop online. And I know these people because some of them have bought multiple times now on the website. These people now, even after the lockdown, have seen how convenient it is to shop on the website. They don't need to wade through traffic to come all the way to my store to engage with me. This will allow us to scale digitally as well. So finally, the issue of scaling that has been such a big problem for us in the industry. This might be our way out of that. We might now start be able to, to scale digitally instead of through the physical store. So I'm, I'm quite excited to see that happen. Um, eventually. And another opportunity I see is for, um, big opportunities I see for niche players. You know, this is a time for you to zero in on who your customer is, for what your competence is, what your passions are, what it is that you are good at doing, and zero in on that, you know. Um, of course, if you are going to do that, you are going to play niche, you know, you are going to try to, um, you know, offer your services to a small targeted group of people. Um, and I think there'll be huge opportunities there. There might be opportunities for people who are going to make pieces for webinar workwear. Who knows, that might be a thing, you know? So there's so many, <laughs> you know what I mean? There will be so many kinds of um, niche playing, new categories are going to come up out of this, um, you know, new ways of thinking about design. You know, when I design, I always think of how versatile I can make my pieces. And I keep telling my customers, you can dress this up, you can dress this up. I'm not going to say that anymore. You know, I want you to dress them down, you know. So now that's, that's a new way of thinking. So I'm, I'm engaging um, my team and I'm thinking of how to take advantage of the niche opportunities and the new opportunities that this um, season is going to bring about. I'm still talking about opportunities. These are unprecedented times. There'll be unprecedented, unprecedented opportunities as well. There'll be solutions that'll be created to, you know, sort out some of the pro new type of problems that have come up, you know. So we will see solutions in distribution. We will see solutions in, even in collaborations. There'll be platforms that will make collaborations even easier for us, you know, because there are a lot of legal issues even around collaborations as well, you know. So I'm excited to see the opportunities these, um, this season will bring. Um, but of, obviously, this means that this is also a time to just survive. Mm. You know, we can only fully engage and enjoy these opportunities if we are still around, mm -hmm. you know, so if our businesses are still standing. So the number one um, challenge or the number one, you know, goal for anybody at this point is to stay in business. You know, if you have to scale down, scale down. If you have to pivot, pivot. If you have to, you know, create a new line of cheaper pieces, do so. You know, some people may actually have to create a new line of luxury products, you know, to target a fewer people. Whatever it is you need to do at this time for your business, you know, just do it. Do it to stay in business because at the other side of this disruption, I promise you it's going to be the best thing that ever happened to the fashion industry. And I say a big amen to that. And amen. just to, just to uh, uh, corroborate what you said about, look, it's about staying alive. I think this thing, I'm sure everybody has seen it. There was this WhatsApp uh, advert 
apparently a quotation from Jack Ma of the Alibaba Group. And he yeah. said, for people in business, 2020 is really just a year for staying alive. Don't yeah. even talk about your dreams or your plans. Just make sure you stay alive. If you can stay yeah. alive, then you would have made a profit already. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Don't even just stay alive. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. So, um, Aya Tommy, you've been, I'm like you, I'm an eternal optimist. Yeah. I always see the good side. I always know that yeah. you're going to be, there's going to be light at the end of the tunnel. And, yeah. uh, but what you said, which has been very interesting, a, a real change in consumer behavior. I am one of those, uh, what do we call the dinosaurs that <laughs> hate to talk online. Mm -hmm. I have to see, I have to feel, I have to touch. But mm -hmm. I'm going to have to change that. Yeah. I also am very suspect about spending my card online. Mm -hmm. I'm very worried about fraud. But you know, that is a generation uh, that has to just, you know, we just have to switch. Meanwhile, my daughter does not go into any shop. Yeah. Everything she everything she buys, she claims are just being delivered to her. And Absolutely. she doesn't like it. She's the same way back. So we yeah. just really have to change. Uh, Tommy, can you mute your mic? Because I think it's giving me some feedback. Please. Oh, so sorry. Um, so, so um, about scaling digitally. And you're absolutely right, because scaling physically is actually very difficult because brick and mortar, the kind of areas you want to be in, the rent you will pay. But scaling digitally is much easier. And then you can actually scale internationally because your, 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 your customers will not only be from Nigeria, they'll be from all over the world. So that is a big opportunity. And then you talk about niche players. Yes. And it's interesting you talk about dressing down because dressing down will be the new luxury. How many of us have got dressed up in the past six weeks? Everybody has been wearing their, their trainers, their tracks. So yeah, it is extremely important. <laughs> Somebody is sending me a message. We dinosaurs need to evolve. Exactly. Mrs. Igodalo, absolutely agree with you. We dinosaurs need to evolve. <laughs> But, um, you know, so what it is, we may have dressed out, you know, uh, my, my sister, she, because no, nobody has been out for so long, so she had to be the chairman of, a, of an AGM, so she had to go for a meeting. She said, you know, I was almost uh, falling down in my heels. I haven't worn high heels in six weeks. So maybe this is the time for people who are doing loafers to start the business of doing loafers. So just people just have to think. We don't have a choice. We have brains and we must use them. We have to just understand that everything has changed. And so everything about the way we do things, about the way we sell things, whether it's fabrics, whether it's jewelry, whether it's shoes, clothes or bags, it just has to change. And the thing is, there's an opportunity in everything. So now, Bumi of Emisara, could you please tell us where do you think the opportunities lie before we go into the Q&A? Bumi, you've got the floor. Thank you. Honestly, without a shadow of doubt in my mind, I absolutely think that this, as crazy as it sounds and as difficult as it looks, and I feel the same way, I think that this is the finest opportunity for us to revamp. My three words in this season are innovate, innovation, reinvention, and pivoting. Everything I'm doing, I'm asking myself, where do I have to innovate? What is the reinvention? And how am I going to pivot in this area? For me, as a Misara, the first thing that happened when this happened was clearly, it was, just, it was it, it, the, the, the request for jewelry and accessory just nose died. When I say nose died, I mean absolutely nobody was asking. Very, very, very few were asking anything. Even if you said it was on sale, it wasn't enough, uh, you know, interest. Because like I said before, who's interested in wearing jewelry? But one thing that came out of this for us as an organization is that, We've, I, I looked at masks as an accessory. I didn't look at it as just a life-saving thing. I looked at it as an accessory. And we started to partner with um, another family business, which I'm a partner in. And we just put it out there. And like Auntie Bimbo, um, we just started making masks. And the demand, I will not lie to you, we can't even meet the demand. We're telling people you have to wait three days, four days, to get your own masks. So this is something that would never have happened before. Matter of fact, I wouldn't even have been interested in that space if this didn't happen. Meanwhile, the factory has been in my face all this while. I think that there are many, many white spaces. I think there are many, many gaps within the fashion industry that nobody was looking at before. For example, technology. Everybody, when they come into the uh, fashion space, wants to be a designer, wants to make clothes, wants to sell jewelry. How about technology? Some of the people that I've seen that are selling jewelry or making clothes actually have a background for this. Who is, who is working on 3D designs? And so you mentioned something about, you know, you like to touch, you like to feel, you know, so the dinosaurs have had it very difficult in this season. But guess what? If we up our game in technology, 
There are 3D designs. There's virtual sampling. Who is going into the spaces? Who is saying, you know what? I'm going to create a niche in this area. And I may not be making clothes, but I'm going to, I'm going to be in the support industry where there's a lot of money, by the way. So the white spaces are there. The gaps are there. This is the time to begin to look and see where the gaps are. If you are spending time, you know, researching, which is what I was hoping everybody would be doing during this season, we're researching. There's so many courses online that are free. I've, I have personally taken all the courses I used to dream of taking. Because in Nigeria, as an entrepreneur, you go from back to back. Mm -hmm. You're going from the factory to the store, back to the factory. You don't even have any time to sit down and do these things that are required to move your business to the next level. When you talk about structure, many of us had not sat down and thoroughly looked at our business. And we, we know what to do, but there hasn't been any time. In this season, we have spent a lot of time putting structure in place. This, this, this deciding where the future of our business is supposed to be. And when I say deciding the future of our business, we don't really know, but it's okay to plan. It's okay to say, okay, you know, we would like to. That's a good place to start. So the opportunities are there, even in the area of, you know, buy Nigerian. I personally think, like Mobile is already pivoting. She's already thinking of manufacturing here. Because even when we open up, the airlines... I've started talking about the new sittings on the planes. <laughs> that informs me that people who go abroad and bring in clothes, their clothes may be very expensive because the tickets to travel may be very expensive. So I'm just looking at the ripple effect of this entire pandemic and the opportunities in between the spaces that we can take. This is the time for people to wake up and begin to see that there, there are things that they can do that is outside of their normal space. For example, another example would be the Nigerian fashion industry is very, 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 very dependent on a social life of Nigeria. We go to church, we, every weekend is party, every weekend is funeral, every weekend is, you know, name it, there's something to do. In the last six weeks, there have been nothing, 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 nothing. What can we do? What other needs can we meet? How else can we, what other alternative can we provide? And that's how we came up with we came up with stay-at-home clothing and we came up with comfort clothing. And we started, I mean, we've been producing simple jersey things before, but we started pu uh, pushing comfort clothing. That basically means you are, you are at home and you are comfy. You're in your jersey, you're in your t-shirts and your shorts. You are comfortable because you're going to have to be at home for a long time. We even started thinking of making like pants. So your, your, your comfortable pants, but you can wear your shirt on top of it. So, I mean, this webinar now, I'm wearing a nice top on top of me. I mean, wearing pajamas at the bottom, you're never going to know. I'm going to stay comfortable. These are the opportunities that we need to think out of the box of. When it comes to jewelry, what we started doing is, I com I com I'm not the type of jewelry brand that would usually make small pieces. We were known for making statement pieces. We began to look at you know, small pieces, dainty pieces, wear at home jewelry. Our anklets begin to, to we began to sell our anklets more because anklets are what you can wear the entire 24 hours and you don't take off and you can bath in. But that's another opportunity. We began to push our anklets more. And then Tommy mentioned something about, you know, this may be actually be the, be the time to actually make high-end goods. I agree with her because in this season, people, if they must spend would like to spend on really good quality pieces. They may not want to spend on, you know, cheaper jewelry or accessories that after one wear is going to get lost. If they must buy, they will buy because it's going to last them a long time. So this is a time to up your quality. If you, if you want to do so, if you want to play in that space, this is the time for you to up your quality and make really good things that people can say, oh, this will last me a long time. Another opportunity that I see is your customer relationship management. We have spent a lot of time and energy. If you know Amy Sarah, we're in your face at least two, three times a week. You will hear from us. And we're, we're reaping the benefits now where we already have a community. If you have not built your community, build your community now because your community stays with you. Your community supports you. Your community will remember you. Even if they will not buy, when they do have to buy, you will be the first one on top of their minds. So spend time engaging your community. Don't do it in the way that 
you know, some people do, oh, we're just checking up on you. I, 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 I like some people because I feel like I see they were checking up on me before. But now it's like, okay, so don't forget me. So there's a way to actually, to actually engage your customer in a way where they feel like, you know, okay, you really care about me. So there's so many opportunities. I don't think we can even finish talking about them. But lastly, one thing I do want to say is that, um, I think I sent it to you, Mrs. Z, yesterday. I saw an advert yes. um, on Instagram about a lady who was saying, oh, she's closing down sale. Mm -hmm. And my heart was really broken, mm -hmm. even though she, she's in the jury and accessory space. And I thought, I wish I knew this person. I wanted to reach out to her and say, are you sure this is the only way? There must be other ways. For example, we are overstocked like mobiles. We are very overstocked because we've made orders and everything. But the opportunity that I looked at was instead of me thinking of my overstock as a challenge, I thought, why can't we upcycle? Upcycling basically means take your, 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 your regular pieces and recycle them. Change what you're using them for. You know, a neck piece that had five lines, reduce it to one line and sell it five times. Do something about it. There's yeah. always an opportunity. And I, I, and I honestly think unless you are absolutely sure, don't give up. There's yeah. light at the end of the tunnel. There is. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Bumi. Thank you for your, your passion and thank you for those amazing insights. I like your mantra, innovation, reinventing and pivot. That pivot is a new one. I like that. You can see somebody, you know, you know, it's like a top. You have a top and it spins around. Yes. So it's a total yes. 360 degrees change. So pivot. You mentioned something. Yes, I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad you're doing maths as well. I mean, we've got almost 200 million Nigerians. Lagos State has made it a compulsory from today. 20 million people in Lagos State. We cannot have enough masks. So mm -hmm. please, everybody, keep producing your masks. Keep your factories busy. You spoke about something really important, technology in, fa in fashion for the value chain. And that's really interesting. You know, if somebody can build an app so that when you have an online experience, you can actually almost feel, touch, and wear what it is. I think that would be amazing. We've said it before. The people in the IT space are going to have a blast at this time. Researching and training. Researching is really interesting. Thing. Training, a lot of us have mentioned, but people should really research. Research about your product. Research about how you can change it and let it evolve to suit the times mm. we're in. Mm. Structure, absolutely fundamental. Everybody must use this period to structure your business. I mean, there's no time for just a one-man business in one. Even if it's one mm -hmm. man, let it be a structured one-man business. And then, you know, I didn't even realize you started doing comfort clothing. You know, I alluded to that when I was talking about the fact that for six weeks, I mean, clothes I haven't worn in years because I never have the time to wear those sort of clothes. Where the clothes I was wearing because all I was doing was lounging around at home. So that is an opportunity. And uh, absolutely, that is so critical. Customer relationship management. And like you, I know the ones that when you get the text, you know that it's a text is sent to 500 other people. So I don't even reply. But the people who even bother to say, dear Mrs. Z or dear you one day, then you know that's how okay, they were probably actually thinking of me. But consumer engagement is key. We normally do our newsletter once a quarter. I told my people, we've got to do a newsletter every month. We need to let people connect with us because we're not having events. They're not seeing us. We need to let our customers, our consumers know that this is where we are. This is what we're doing. So we told everybody today about our two webinars. You need to continue to tell your story. As you say, I mean, and Sarah, indeed, if I, whenever I get your little thing and you are advertising something, I say, it's me serious. But she's just reminding me that she's there. You know, so that when the time comes and I want to buy a gift, I want to buy something, I'll remember her. So engage your consumers. I wanted to also sure. say something with engaging your customers. Engaging your customer, honestly and truly, is we're human beings and we feel and we sense. Mm -hmm. I, always, I always feel like as if, if you actually really care about the people, it won't be just about your jewelry or your accessory or your clothes. You will be concerned. So sometimes engaging my customer can be, oh, did you know notice that um, something is showing on YouTube yeah. or, you know, oh, there's a fun thing here. Why don't you watch that? And you'd be surprised that the most quiet customers who have never said anything to you will send you a message later and say, oh, you know, oh, that was a fun show. Thank you for telling me about yeah. it. That means you have stuck in their brain. Yeah. We must learn to engage our customers in a way that shows and is sincere about, you know, your feelings about them. Yeah. And they will always remember you. Always yeah. remember. So everybody just has to think outside the box and look for a way of making sure you stay in your customers' minds. It's time to now take the questions from the uh, uh, participants. And I think some of the questions may have come up uh, early. So maybe probably the answers may have been given. 
for businesses who are pivoting, I think you wanted to write, or for those who may have found a glimpse of opportunities during and post COVID, what support will you be needing in terms of manpower? For businesses who are pivoting or for those who may have found a glimpse of opportunities during and post COVID, what support do you think they'll be needing in terms of manpower? Um, is there anybody who'd like to take that? Support in terms of manpower. Ayotomi, should I throw that at you? What do you think if people have opportunities? Yes. Um, well, first of all, um, regarding manpower, I, I think this is also an, a time for us to train and empower our staff more. What I've realized that is a lot, a lot of us do a lot ourselves. Um, and during this time, we are feeling the pressure because we are still doing everything ourselves. We're doing all the thinking ourselves, doing all the implementation ourselves. So one of the things you might um, want to do at this time with some of the opportunities you'll find is either hire, hire, you know, hire more quality people for your team. Um, instead of now that you may have to lay off five people, I'm just giving an example, hire one good hand. Um, also, collaborations would help. So if you are looking for opportunities, the opportunities will come either in um, creating, in manufacturing, in retailing, in distribution, or in marketing. Those are where the opportunities will come. So first of all, I would say look for people who have strengths in this area, brands or business owners who have strengths in this area, and see how you can collaborate with them. Or, you know, this is also an, another opportunity for us to engage other talents and gifts that we may have. So if you have talent in copywriting now, you know, you've been doing this for your brand alone, this may be a time for you to offer that service to another brand, you know, for, as a, for a fee. You know, um, this opens other streams of income for you. This is time for us to other, also engage our other talents so that we can earn more from other um, gifts that we have other than just this one platform. I found that one of the problems that I've found as well is a lot of us have put so much pressure on this business as our sole source of, of income. So now that we have this challenge and you know, there's um, the lockdown, we found that we are so dependent on our businesses. It's time for us to probably start looking at other gifts that we have and other you know, talents that we have. So to that question, I would say collaborations would help. I would say empowering some of the staff that you have already would help. And I would say now maybe good quality hire, you know, um, Kala said something about co-sharing, you know, four of us can come together and, you know, co-share staff, you know, that is more qualified than we could have afforded before to take advantage of some of the opportunities that um, may come our way. Great. Thank you, Bim. Uh, thank you, Ayotomi. Uh, yeah. Next question. The 50 billion Naira the CBN is given as palliatives to business. How can the fashion industry apply or get access to the funds? Uh, Kala, would you like to answer that, please? The 50 billion the CBN is given as palliatives to business. How can the fashion so, industry apply or get access? To I think the, the CBN fund is open to every industry, um, creative industry or whatever industry. You just apply for it. Um, I think they have a website. Uh, I can share it here. It, uh, uh, you just apply for it. It's a normal fund from the CBN. Okay, I think there's a, it goes through some microfinance bank, doesn't it? Yes, Nisra or some Nisra. 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 Yes. Nisra. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, a few people have asked if this is being recorded. Yes, this uh, session is being recorded and it will be available on Eventful's uh, YouTube channel. So um, it, yeah, all the details will be on our website. So you can go there and find out. So if you'd like to listen to it again, uh, you can do that. So that's the answer to that question. Um, next question. Thank you for this idea and for helping to reduce the pressure this pandemic has caused. My question is, apart from the nose mask production, what else can we do? Because almost everyone can make nose masks. We still have to be in business. Thank you. This is from Anita. Um, I'm going to have Bimbo answer that. But you know, as I said, Anita, there are 20 million people in Lagos. Before you produce 20 million masks, it will be a long time. But uh, Abimbola, would you like to answer her, please? What else yeah. can people do apart from those masks? Those masks. Well, uh, um, I don't know if anyone has seen the videos of Rough and Tumble and um, Tiffany Amber. Uh, Tiffany Amber, yeah. They are doing, um, they've quickly readjusted and they're doing medical uniforms. Someone has actually just sent me a text text now that they want to do scrubs and you know the scrubs the, which are medical uniforms they come in different they do really nice designs now 
So there are uniforms. Mobiles has, is already saying, oh, she's think, thinking of looking at manufacturing in, within Nigeria. Because what, what is happening now is that the fashion industry is going to have to sort of operate along the lines that um, we should in the value chain. If you're a designer, do you want to focus on that? If you're going to focus on that, how does it work? Are you a manufacturer? Are you a retailer? Someone like Mobuzz has positioned herself. She's a retailer, you know, and she probably has her own line of um, uh, clothing that she does, but she doesn't manufacture. So there are so many opportunities. Position, position yourself as a manufacturer. Then post-COVID, I mean, people are talking about um, loungewear, easy, comfy clothing, people will order those kind of things as well. The opportunities truly are limitless. It's not only a mask. Somebody called today, we've never made overalls. Someone called today about overalls. So opportunities will keep coming yeah. up. The important thing is to have the capacity on the ground mm -hmm. and the ability to do good quality work, to build the credibility for people to trust you and you know, come back to you. You know, for yeah. you to have customers and build um, the credibility. That is where we need to focus on because that is a, the greatest problem that we have in the fashion industry right now. Yeah. Thank you so much, Abimbala. I think that was uh, useful. This isn't a question. It says, good evening, everyone. Olajide uh, Lawal. Good evening, everyone. I don't really have a question, but I just wanted to explain a little bit on how we've been carrying on during the pandemic. We actually focus on production, which we never stop because we're working from home, especially the waxing process. So we prepare our dyes and when we're free, given uh, we give uh, the social distance and we still make the, the fabric. So even though we're not making sales presently, we're still producing for some outstanding orders. Thank you for that encouragement, Olajide. Uh, next question. Uh, Good evening, everyone. Before the lockdown and epidemic, I was about to launch my very first collection. My question is, what's the best approach to take at this time? Bumi, would you like to take that? Ufama Owo is asking. Oh, wow. Just before the lockdown also, we just also opened our store at the Palms. And um, I can understand how you feel in terms of the investments you've already put into it and everything else. Look, the, the truth is this. There is no really easy answer to this. The bottom line is, if you have already produced the pieces, you want to move your pieces. I mean, I don't expect you, if they are close, if they were jury, it would have been easier for me to tell you uh, upcycle and, and change the look, be able to move them. I, I don't like sales either. I agree with mobile. I don't like to devalue the work that we've put into something and, and do a sale, especially on a new collection. Honestly, so what some people are doing, like if you do some research with companies abroad, what some of them are doing is, you know, offering virtual, virtual, um, what you call it, virtual, um, uh, what, there's a word yeah, for this. Thing. Live streaming or something? Yes. So some people are actually live streaming their new collection. They're going on Instagram live. They're pushing. The bottom line is you're going to have to work 10 times harder than you would have had to work. That's right on a regular day yeah. so you can go on instagram live do a live show get your if you have your you know maybe a friend that lives with you or a star lives with you put on the clothes you know put it on a mannequin style it up style it down you have to really really push yeah. and then secondly you have to manage your expectations and thirdly do not be discouraged mm -hmm. i'm saying it now do not discourage even if you don't get the outcome that you were hoping for. It's okay. It's okay. You live to fight again. You live yes. to fight again. Excellent. It's not yeah. over. Thank you, Bumi. I, I, I absolutely agree with you. Okay, the next question I'm going to ask Mobo to take. What advice can you give to new entries into the fashion industry? I have just launched a ready-to-wear brand just before this pandemic and lockdown. And I'm wondering what's going to happen knowing a lot of people will be out of job with little or no purchasing power. I think part of what Bumi has said would apply to you, but Mobo, yeah. is there any other insight you'll add? I yeah. think it's just this is the time for you to engage people that already have existing platform. Talk to them. A lot of us right now, we're, 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 we're kinder, I'll say that because we're all affected. Yeah. So reach out to people that you know that are already that have already an existing platform so you can um, 
leverage on that and then find customers. Just find your customers. Try, you know, when we started this, I said we have to be creative. So break out of your box, break out of the box, break out of your thinking that it's got to be you doing everything. It's about all of us collaborating to deliver value. So look at the people that can, that, that are already working in the space where you want to play and reach out to them. So, but then yeah. don't give up, just start and move on and look yeah. for people yeah. and let that see, deter you. Can I give yes. out one idea? Let me give you one idea. I'm sure yeah. you have 10 friends. 10 friends that love you or sister mm. or family. Take mm. 10 of your items, plan with them, pay everybody's data, even if it's just, you know, it's like, you don't even need to pay. Yeah, you need to pay the data. At the same time, let 10 of them run an Instagram live, Instagram live launch. At the same time, tap, use those 10 people's <laughs> network and launch your outfits. At the same time, 10 different outfits, they're wearing, Sharing it, they're showcasing it. That can be your launch, and see what happens from there. You see, your good uh, family needs, and friends. She needs, she needs to pay you. Yeah. She needs to pay you for that. So that was it. No, that was free. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, okay, somebody tell me. Tell you, Gumala is saying, take advantage of TikTok for a lunch. Yes. Um, I think uh, my alarm has gone off, so it's five minutes to seven. And uh, I'd like to just end the question and answer with this last one. It's not actually a question. It's actually. Um, is actually just a statement. And I think it just um, uh, optimizes what we're trying to do. Thank you for this great opportunity to learn and rest my mind, says Fumilayo Hazelet. This great opportunity to learn and rest my mind. And I think that's what we really wanted to do by bringing this to you today. We wanted people to be encouraged. We know that fear is rampant. And you know, as everybody has said, if you're given to the fair, you're never, you're never going to be able to get out of it and make sure that your business continues after the pandemic. So our mantra to you is that you cannot give up. You cannot give in. You should not be afraid. You should see the opportunities in the horizon. You should know that this too shall pass. And you must understand, why did you go into this business anyway? There must be a why. So if you look at your why, why you went into the business, remember what made you go there. It was never going to be a bed of roses. And then remember also, what is happening to you is happening to everywhere, all, everybody all over the world, in the developed countries, in the African countries, in China, everywhere people are feeling it. So we're known to be resilient people, Nigerians. We're, we're known to be creative. We're known to be industrious. This is the time to show who we are. We've had an abs absolutely amazing time. time. I want to thank my partners, my sisters, Ayotomi Mubo, Bumi Bimbo, and my brother now, Kola for a fantastic session. Thank you so much, everybody. And look out, please follow us on the Fashion Souk. Uh, follow us on Instagram because all the things that we're going to do about Fashion Souk will be there. And we look forward to exciting you. Thank you so much Thank and have you. a great night, everybody. Oh.